Today we're going to look at calculating the horizontal and vertical derivatives of our magnetic data. So we can see here I've got some high-res magnetic data and it's actually over Sil um, and Dykes in South Africa. And so the first thing to decide is do you want to take the RTP or reduce to pole of the data first so that excuse me, your final image will show your anomalies directly over the body. If you don't do the RTP, then they'll be slightly shifted off to the side and you just need to remember that um, they're not directly over the body. Something that might sway you on this one is how much remnants do you have in your data? Um, is your data remanently magnetized? So this is quite, these, sorry, these features are quite young features and there is slight remnant um, but it's not that significant and so in this case I, it would probably be worth doing the RTP. You can decide for your data, just keep it in mind. And so how I would do that is I first need to load the menu. I would go GX, load menu, and I go down to mag map. Go up to mag map, mag map and select the first one, one step filtering. And I'm going to put in the original grid file. So I've got to scroll down here to find this magnetic grid file. I'm going to give the output name. I'm going to save it in a place where I'm going to be able to find it again. So I'm also going to choose a name. So I'm going to choose the original name and add on to the end RTP. And I'm going to click Save. And then load a control file. Um, hopefully you should have one that's um, in your folder. If not, email me and I can always send you one. And then click here on Filter and we're going to click on the first one and go down to reduce to magnetic pole and you can see you're going to have to have the inclination and the declination of your data set. Now maybe you don't know that, how do we go about finding that? Um, let's cancel and cancel and so one of the easiest ways I find to determine this is to go over here create a new database, you can call it whatever you want call it something useful, I'm not, I'm going to just call it a test, click OK and I want to find out what are some of my coordinates in my on my grid here and how I do that is go grid and image utilities grid profile, so I'm literally going to extract a profile from here from my grid, um, choose some data uh, it's not so important which data set you choose, you don't have to have three, mine's just loaded three automatically just make sure under grid one you choose one of your grids that you're currently using give the new line name, you can just call it zero and how often do you want a sample, not so important, I've just put a thousand and make sure it says digitize from map and so what that's telling us is that you click on the map click again at the end of the profile, right click and so here it's extracted XY coordinates because my grid was originally in XY. And now, <coughs> excuse me, I want to convert this to lat long. Um, and so I'm going to go new projected coordinate system under coordinates. I'm going to choose my X and Y. I'm going to determine what coordinate system they're in. I'm going to click, uh, type in longitude and latitude click next, I'm going to click on geographic and you can see it's given me my that long. Something else I'm going to need is I'm going to need elevation so I've got a grid file that's got all my elevations in it so I'm literally going to use these X and Y values to sample this grid and to extract their Z values at these locations and so I'm going to go grid and image, utilities sample a grid so I'm using my X and Y and I'm going to create a column that says elevation, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to scroll to uh, navigate to where I've saved this grid, so you can see it's topo, and I'm going to click OK, and you can see it's loaded elevations. If you don't have an elevation grid to be able to do this, check out my video about using the seeker feature in Geosoft that helps you extract SRTM data to get elevations. And so the next step now is to go GX load a menu and scroll down to IGRF and now it's loaded this IGRF menu and what we're going to do is to calculate the IGRF of a channel and so what you need to do here is you can keep IGRF, keep auto 
survey date. What date was the survey flown? I know mine was flown in 2001. I don't know the exact month, so I'm going to just put dash 0101. What are my longitude channels? I select them. You've got to have them already. What's my elevation channel? You've got to have it already as well. And now you're going to give headers. So these channels don't exist yet. You're just going to give headings to these channels. So total field, inclination, and declination. So these are values that are calculated, um, IGRF values that are calculated. And these, this is the inclination and the declination that we need to take to plug in back into the reduced to pole. I click OK. It doesn't automatically load them. Sorry, you go click on the column heading, go list, then click TF, do it again, list, inclination, click on the heading again, list, declination. So you can see inclination and declination um, are all the same. It's just because um, it's not a very long line, so it doesn't change along this line. <coughs> so now that we've got the inclination and declination values, we can go back to MagMap, one step filtering. Thankfully, it saved all the values we put in earlier. Click on Filter, scroll down to Reduce to Magnetic Pole, put in the inclina inclination of minus 66 and declination of minus 22.4. Amplitude correction, you can read up about that. I'm going to leave it blank so it uses the default. Click OK. Click OK again. Overwrite this file, so I've obviously done this before. And so this is the RTP grid. Let's put them next to each other so we can compare them. So the main thing is that it shifts your anomaly to be over the body. And it, you can see it has changed. Um, these values down here, you've got a larger blue. So, yeah, you've just got to be careful. Sorry, I've put these the wrong way around. I meant to do it that way around. So I've got my original grid on the left and the RTP on the right. So, yeah, you can see instead of this strong blue, it's now shifted to be a stronger anomaly, supposedly over the body that is causing this anomaly. And again, here you've got this positive over the um, body instead of this positive negative. Okay, so now I'm going to use this RTP value to calculate my derivatives. This is actually the quicker part. So now we're going to go to MagMap, one step filtering. I'm going to choose my RTP grid and then I'm going to change the output grid. I like to say what I've done to this grid as I've been going along. So I keep the fact that I've RTP'd it and I add on here a vertical derivative filter, I'm going to scroll to derivative over here. This can be different in different versions of Geosoft, so you might have to scroll down to vertical derivative, but in this version I click on derivative and here I can choose to have horizontal or vertical. I'm going to click on Z and it's my first vertical derivative. Click OK, click OK, you can see I've done this before as well. OK, and so this is my first vertical derivative. Let's put RTP on the left and vertical derivative on the right. So you can see a lot of north-south features, and that's most likely um, flight lines if the data hasn't been leveled correctly. But you can see a lot more features coming out. There's this dark coming down the side here, this dark coming northwest to southeast. So that's the vertical derivative. Let's try the horizontal derivative. So again, change your output file. I just put HD and BD for horizontal and vertical. And now I'm going to choose my X derivative. Um, first order, click OK. I'm actually going to put here XV, XHD so we can try what the YHD looks like. OK, and so this is XHD, and so you can see it's picking up a lot more um, of the you know, well, the blue features are quite a lot more prominent. Let's put our vertical derivative on the left and our horizontal derivative on the right. So yeah, it might help you map different features. Let's try now doing your YHD. So change your output file. YHD. Click OK. Click OK. Okay, so that's coming more in this direction here. You're not noticing your flight line so much anymore. Let's put our XHD on the left and our YHD on the right. 
And so every little bit of information helps if you're mapping. And so we're seeing a lot more of a northwest south easterly trend here because of um, this change in the direction of the horizontal derivative. So yeah, that's how you would calculate your horizontal and your vertical derivatives um, using your reduced to pole image. If you don't you calculate your reduced to pole image, just remember that your anomaly is your positive, strong positive anomaly is not going to be directly over your body if you're not at the poles. <coughs> Good luck.